The following is a sponsored program paid for by First Alliance Credit Union. Welcome to Good Money Moves featuring Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell. And as always, I am joined by Jenna Tobble, AVP of Marketing at First Alliance Credit Union. Hi, Jenna. Hey, Andy. Last week, we talked about credit cards versus Mm -hmm. debit cards and when to use them and how to use credit cards responsibly. Yes. What's the uh, good money moves topic for this week? Yeah. So today I have a real member story that I wanted to share because I felt that it really showcases a lot of the different topics that we talk about on our show. Um all in one go. So I'm going to walk you through this member situation and then talk through the financial solution that we were actually able to provide them to get them back on track and kind of talk through why this was really the best solution for this member given the set of circumstances we were dealing with. All right. This this sounds really interesting. Yeah. Maybe to set the stage, what was the what was the scenario for this particular member? Yes. So for privacy, we're just going to call this member John Doe. So John owns a construction business and had been banking with the same institution for over 15 years. Unfortunately, he needed loans at different points in time to really run his business and grow it over the last 15 years. And he'd actually accumulated a pretty significant amount of debt in unsecured credit cards, over $26,000. And he was paying about $900 a month in just credit card minimum payments across like 20 different cards, like a lot. Um, But despite this large debt and the number of cards he was managing, he actually never missed a payment. So his credit score when he came in was not the highest. It was around like 620. Um, He also had a house that he'd owned for about 15 years that had like a 30-year mortgage, but there were no additional liens on it. Um, The house was originally valued at around $200,000 when he bought it. And prior to coming to us, he had actually just finished the basement on the house, which added some additional value to the home. Um, And now after these renovations and just the general increase in housing pricing. Um, he actually had like $170,000 in equity in this house. It was, Sweet. yeah. So he actually came to the credit union looking for some solutions to his mounting credit card debt. Um, and he had actually been turned away by other banks, including his own due to his 620 credit score. Oh my gosh. Even though he's sitting on $170,000 equity in a home. Well, number one, after learning so much about credit unions over the past few years working with you, Jenna, I can (laughs) see why he went to a credit union to get some help. Yeah. So what did the lending advisors at First Alliance think when uh, they were presented with his problem or his scenario? Yeah. First, let's talk about his credit score. It's, I mean, it's low. 620 is not a super great score, but it's also not the worst it could be either. So to give you some context, let's break down credit score ranges um, really quick. So a very good to exceptional credit score range is above 720. And we learned last week that the average in Minnesota is 742. Yeah. So good job, Minnesotans, right? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So at this score, this exceptional score, right? Um, you're going to receive uh, the best interest rates. You're going to be approved for loans very easily, right? Um, and just means that you'll have a much easier time accessing credit when you need it at affordable rates. Now, a generally good credit score range is anything from about 650 up to 719. So while you'll end up paying a little bit higher rates than you would if your score was like exceptional, you're still going to be very likely to be approved for loans without any issues. Um, You just might have to pay some higher rates depending on where you fall in that range and what the particular lender's 
scoring models look like. Now, if your score falls below 640, this is where you really start to see more difficulty accessing affordable credit. You're going to be charged much higher rates, um, provided a lender is even going to approve you for a loan in the first place. So the okay. farther you get away from that 640 and below, the the more and more you're going to struggle. So well, that's the good why news I say that, is John yeah. Doe is, I mean, 20 points is a lot, I guess, when you're at that end of the scale. Mm -hmm. But it was not an impossible gap. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like he was a, a 520, right? That that's a whole nother scenario. So 620, okay. it's low, but it's not the worst it could be either. So, and before I dig back into John's situation, just a quick reminder of some of the kind of key areas that really impact your score. So payment history makes up about 35%, amounts owed about 30%, Length of history, about 15% of your score, your credit mix, about 10%, and new credit lines, about 10% of your score. Oh, okay. So when you apply all of this to the situation I just laid out for John, you can easily see that what's really actually kind of having a grip on his score is the amount of debt that he owes, right? Because he's got a really good payment history. He's paid on time essentially for 15 years. He's got long history, 15 years of history, maybe maybe longer. He he does have a lot of cards, but he also has a mortgage and, you know, I don't recall, but probably a, an auto loan or something out there too, right? So he's got a good credit mix going on, even though he has a lot going on in credit cards. And that new credit, there was some variable depending on what his different mix of credit cards was. But so really it's that, amount that he owes that's really bringing that score down so once he gets that paid off he could actually pretty quickly boost his score to a very healthy score probably like 680 to maybe 700 at even okay and part of his problem too i imagine if he's making minimum payments on all that credit card debt he's really not making progress in paying it yeah. off yeah mm -hmm. okay so then if he wasn't he wasn't in that bad of a position overall. Mm -hmm. Why why weren't the banks willing to help? Yeah, so great question. <laughs> and, and I will just say that at First Alliance, we don't just look at your score to make lending decisions, right? We really do look at all the parts of your financial situation. And we try to read your financial life story to really understand how you got to where you are now and what makes the most sense for you to move forward? So a lot of time, I mean, banks are for-profit institutions. So if you don't walk in and you're not going to make them good profit quickly, they don't really want to serve you, unfortunately. Okay. So in John's case, after talking with him, we found out that actually some of the credit card debts were accumulated when he was a student even. But the fact that he hasn't missed a payment in years shows that he has good intention to manage his money, which is why it's so important that you never miss a payment. Always at least make the minimum payments due. And if you are starting to feel like you're struggling and are starting to struggle to even meet those minimum payments, it's really important that you, if you're a First Alliance member, come talk to us. We'll try to work something out so that you can avoid damaging your score. But if obviously, if you have debt elsewhere, talk to your lenders, let them know what's going on. They they will try to help you. They want to get paid and they want you to pay them. So they sure. will work with you. Um, now, in John's scenario, and this goes for anyone, like just keep trying to improve yourself and if you can't take big huge leaps right he john was struggling to make those big huge leaps he just felt like he was spinning his wheels making these 900 dollars a month payments and not getting anywhere right um you know that's when you do he, he made the right choice he came to the credit union he talked to some talked to us and mapped out a a plan to get this under control um and he was definitely a case where we actually were able to help him pretty easily yeah he had the building blocks were all there. He just needed yeah. a plan. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I can imagine his frustration. That must have been something else. We will take a quick break. We're talking about 
first alliance a real world situation where first alliance credit union helped in and stepped helped a member uh make that progression to make good money moves we'll return in a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobel from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobel from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell with Jenna Tobel, First Alliance Credit Union, and we've been talking about a real-world situation of a First Alliance member who had, uh, I don't know, what we, a challenge, yeah, to say the least. So he kind of covered where he was at and what he was dealing with. So what was the solution that First Alliance came up with to help uh, John Doe with his credit issues? Yeah, so he actually came to us seeking a personal loan to consolidate all of this credit card debt. Um, And if you're a longtime listener of the show, you know that personal loans are a very common option for debt consolidation. And we do actually recommend that quite frequently for people. Um, and if you look at it at today's rate and mind you rates fluctuate. So today's rate, when you hear this is not going to necessarily be the case that it is today. So, but at this moment in time, when we were working with John, the rate he would have qualified for because of his 620 score would have been about 17.99, not a great great rate, (laughs) but also when he compared that to the rates he was paying on his cards, you know, in the in the 20s, close to 30s, in some cases on some of those cards, because as his score continued to fall, yeah, his rates on his cards would go up because that's just what credit card companies do. They will re-evaluate the rate you should be paying, and then you are just end up in this even worse situation, right? So at that point, he, 17.99 versus 20-some, 25, almost 30% in some cases, that felt like that could still really help them out and cut some costs, right? And, and get a little bit more manageable control over these 20 different payments he was trying to make. So the interesting thing is that when John came in, what he didn't realize at the time was that he did have that $170,000 in equity in his home, that he, that could actually be the solution to his debt problems through a home equity line of credit, which we also recommend using home equity lines of credit to consolidate debt all the time right? in, We've in the right situations. Before, right? Yeah. So not only would this solve his debt consolidation problem, it would actually provide him an even lower interest rate than the personal loan would that he originally came in looking for. It's interesting to me that, I wonder how many people are completely unaware of that equity that they have because Mm -hmm. the increase in the value of real estate over the past four years has been so tremendous. Yeah. That, you know, it's this, yeah, it's it's, this collateral people don't even realize they have. A hundred percent. Okay. So maybe uh, explain more how this worked for John. Uh, tapping into that equity to fix his problems. Yeah. So first, let me explain what a home equity line of credit is. So a home equity line of credit, often referred to as a HELOC, means that you're opening up a line of credit and the limit on your account is how much equity is available in your home. So what your home value is versus what you owe that gap in between is the equity. Sure. So the equity in your home makes the loan a secured loan versus an unsecured loan, like most credit cards or or even personal loans are. And this secured versus unsecured is why the interest rates are going to be more favorable because the loan is backed by that collateral, your house. So when you get a line of credit, you're also not borrowing like this lump sum the way you would with 
alone. It It is a line of credit that you can draw on over time and you might be qualified for a large amount, but you don't necessarily need to use all of that, right? Um, so instead, you can kind of borrow the money you need and pay back the interest, borrow what you need, pay back, borrow what you need, just like a credit card, but bigger and backed by secure house, right? So if that weren't enough of an advantage, when you make your HELOC payment, again, that's going to be available to you over the life of the loan. So it's a it's a great tool. It's a great financial tool. And I can see with him running a business, it's especially advantageous because after he gets the mess straightened away, he's got that built in line of credit that he can tap and take advantage of when situations come up that could actually grow his business. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Yeah. It, it provides, it's a great financial tool. And More people the, need to as use you it. you say, the, the credit union, the financial institution is able to offer the advantage because they have an insurance. So I guess that leads me to my next question. Um, using that equity is a little bit risky because, you know, you're putting up your home's value as collateral. Yeah. So, I mean, anytime you're taking on debt, there is a risk because, you, again, you're counting on future income to be able to pay off the debts. But let's just recap John's situation again to really un, kind of highlight why this is not actually sure. a very risky option for him. So currently he owes over $26,000 across 20 credit cards. That is a huge number. Yeah. And uh, quite honestly, it would be very hard to manage. But the fact that he has not missed payments in over 15 years, despite the debt load and plus his mortgage, right? I mean, like that's a lot that he's probably shelling out every month. So it means he can afford it. Oh. So being that credit cards have some of the highest interest rates, because again, they're unsecured. I mean, it's really no wonder why his minimum payments were, first of all, so high and why he wasn't making any progress paying them off despite making over $900 a month in payments towards these debts. Like it was just this vicious cycle of never making progress or not enough progress. Do you imagine being the, you know, whatever night you set aside to pay your bills mm. and have to either electronically make the payment or however he was making the payments to yeah. 20 different credit cards? Yeah. I oh, just, ouch. Yeah crazy. <laughs> well, it shows, by, it shows a level of responsibility too. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's why it was, that's why we take time to get to know people like what, what's the deal. But by consolidating his debts with this home equity line of credit, he will actually be significantly reducing his monthly obligation. So John was able to qualify for almost a $90,000 home equity. And he ultimately then advanced about 30000 off the bat to pay down his credit card and a few other obligations that he realized he could pay down with this. And the great thing about the HELOC is that the minimum payment is always going to be about 1% of what you borrowed generally. So his minimum payment is 300 bucks a month. That's a six hundred dollar. <laughs> that's a six hundred dollar a month difference in payments. So if John continued to pay between six hundred and even continue to pay that nine hundred dollars a month, he would be able to pay off his debt in like three to five years. So like quite quickly, and depending on if he how aggressive he wanted to be with that, which yeah. considering he was struggling to make a dent in his debt at all, three to five years is nothing. Well, yeah, you're right. Going back to that one night or whatever it is, he's paying these 20 credit card, credit card bills and he's spinning his wheels and he's making no progress. And actually things are getting worse because the interest rates are rising. Yeah. He's going, <laughs> I'm going to be kicking 600 bucks towards the principal every month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that would be a, a game changer indeed. Okay. We'll have to, we have to take a quick break already, but. This is a wonderful plan. It is, it's neat to see where you took a a very, very frustrating scenario for a person and turned it into mm -hmm. something extraordinarily manageable just like that. 
Yeah. Okay. We'll be back in a moment. Jenna Tobble with First Alliance Credit Union today on Good Money Moves at News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. You're listening to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell with Jenna Tobble, First Alliance Credit Union. And uh, today, I guess we've uh, talking about a solution to a problem that involved uh, tapping into equity in a home, which is something that quite a few of us have now, mm-hmm. probably a lot more than you realize because of the increase in property values that has occurred and uh, creates a very advantageous situation if you can use the HELOC, which is the Home Equity Line of Credit, right? HELOC? Yes, yes. Are there any final thoughts you want to share concerning uh, home equity loans? Yeah, so I think there's a few kind of important tips, I guess, for managing a home equity line of credit. So it it is still debt. You do have to manage it responsibly, um, which just means, you know, before you sign on the dotted line, consider, you know, what is your actual goal for this? You know, what do you plan to use those funds for? What is that payment amount going to look like if if you draw on it at different intervals to make sure that you understand what that payment is going to cost you, you know, you do still need to understand it just like you would any other loan. The other thing to keep in mind is home equity lines of credit are, they have drop periods and they have repayment periods. So remember that once that drop period ends, which is, can be as short as like three to five years, some can be longer Um, So you have this period of time to draw on the funds and you can make payments on it over that time, right, Um, as well. But once that draw period ends, that's when it kicks into a repayment period. So anything that you still owe is when you have to start paying down that debt like you would in like more of a fixed way. So again, make sure that you're planning your budget accordingly to make these repayment obligations on time and that you know what you're getting into. And your lender should explain all of this to you before you ever sign anything. Just know that these are things, these are terms you may hear if you start to do more research on home equity lines of credit. Okay. You take out a home equity line of credit, a HELOC. Yes. They are for a certain period of time, Mm -hmm. 10 years, let's say. Yeah. I cannot, pull money out of it the entire 10 years at some point during that 10 years i have to start paying it down so it closes out within that 10 years am i understanding that correctly correct yep because your your equity in your home is always going to change based on what your home is worth what you owe on it so you want to make sure that we're kind of balancing that out over the years sure so it doesn't mean that you can't you know, refinance, I guess, for lack of a better word, your home equity line of credit in 10 years and like start drawing on it more. Or, you know, again, that that period of time is going to be different based on the lender, based on what you qualify for on, you know, what there's some different parameters. A whole nother show to get into that. Those details. But but, these are the things that you'll talk with your lender about. Exactly. Yep. And and if you start researching them, you're going to hear these terms. So just know that there are kind of two periods when it comes to home What's equities. an important thing to know? Mm-hmm. It is. And I'll be um, honest with you. I had a HELOC in the past, mm-hmm. and I had paid it down early, so I never ran into yeah. that situation. But I was unaware that that was the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And again, every, I mean, every lender has different parameters for what they place on that. Your personal situation is going to play into that a little bit, too. But that is very common. Once again, Um, it depends. (laughs) It depends. It depends. Now, final thought, right? As with any debt, pay back your borrowed amounts promptly. Just pay on time and do it so you don't fall into a bad situation and 
harm your yeah. credit. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, and it'll minimize the interest you owe over time too, if you pay quickly. So it's in everybody's best interest. It's a good money move. Fantastic information as always, Jenna. And once again, of always, we are, we're doing this, what you call very high level. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's a lot more information out there, and uh, maybe you can point us in the right direction if we wish to take the time to learn more. Yes. You can visit our website at firstalliancecu.com. You can subscribe to our blog. We release new financial tips and advice every week. Past episodes of this show at firstalliancecu.com slash podcast or on carryorcnews.com. You can also subscribe to Good Money Moves on Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, and Spotify. And if you love our show, please leave us a review. And of course, I strongly encourage you to reach out to our team at First Alliance Credit Union. We are here to help you start making good money moves today. That's First Alliance Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA and an equal housing lender. All right, Jenna, thank you again. You bet. Look forward to next week when we get together again for another Good Money Moves right here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.